Our project is called Leaf Doctor and it is about plant disease detection. We are the team members. Irena researched the case, Mariam developed the models, and Yasamin deployed them. Problem. Agriculture plays a critical role in providing food supply for a growing population of the world. One of the biggest problems in the agricultural sector is the loss of crops due to plant diseases. Research shows that on average, annual global food supply loss is 40%. But in developing countries where more than 80% of agricultural production is generated by small farms, the loss of crops can be as big as almost 100% for some of their products. For small farms, the loss of crops has devastating consequences, which make crop diseases a major threat to food security around the world. It is critical for a farmer to identify the disease as early as possible so that they can take action and don't let the disease spread the entire crop. However, this can be challenging due to the lack of the necessary lab infrastructure. It is also difficult for a farmer to consistently monitor their field as it takes a lot of time and effort. Proposed solution. An app can be developed to help the farmers. Using such an app, we can identify the type of plant, or we can identify if the plant has a disease, or detect the type of disease. Also, the app can provide treatment options. This app can also be installed on a drone to improve efficiency and save time for the farmer by dramatically increasing coverage of the inspected area. For this project, we use Plant Village dataset. It's a public data set. The data was collected by Penn State University's research and development team that empowers a smallholder farmers with technology in their fight against plant diseases. The data set contains more than 54,000 images of 14 crop species. For example, apple, blueberry, corn, bell pepper, potato, soybean, and tomato. The images are leaves affected by 21 different types of diseases including fungal diseases, bacterial, mold, viral, and disease caused by mite. Here are some examples of the data, healthy images and images of leaves affected by different diseases. The data set contains only plant leaves. All images are color, and the image size is 256 by 256 in three channels. In this slide, two graphs are shown. In the bar chart, you can observe the distribution of 38 classes in the dataset. Apparently, a couple of plant disease pairs have much more samples than the others. The pie chart also shows that our dataset is imbalanced. Approximately 75% of the leaves are diseased, while the healthy ones comprise only 25% of the dataset. Baseline model. If we consider random guessing as the baseline classifier, we will have an accuracy equal to 2.6% overall. To get familiar with the image classification in Python and to practice the deployment process, we also developed another baseline model. In our SVM binary classifier, there are two classes, healthy or class 0 and diseased or class 1. We randomly chose a balanced subset of 3,000 images to train and test the SVM. We used 60% for training and 40% for testing. The processing steps are as follows. First, we converted each color image into grayscale. Next, we generated the histogram and created the feature matrix and centered it. As there were still many features, we applied PCA to reduce the number of input features. Then we trained the SVM model. The F score, the F1 score of the trained SVM was 67% on the test set. Final solution. We decided to adapt a pre-trained model. We used AlexNet as the deep learning architecture and used the transfer learning approach to train the model. AlexNet is composed of five convolutional layers, followed by two fully connected and a final softmax output layer. In particular, we reshape the last layer. Then we train the last layer while we freeze the other layers. Train to test ratio was 10% to 90%. We used PyTorch to develop the final model. 
This slide shows the training process in CPU versus GPU. The delivered model trained on GPU in 30 events. In this graph, you can see how the model learns in 30 events. The final F1 score reaches 84% on validation set, and we witness significant progress compared with the baseline model. However, we should notice that we only apply 10% of the dataset for training. If we use a larger fraction, we might observe even more progress in prediction. Packaging and deployment. We applied MLflow model for packaging our already trained deep learning model to be used in our downstream tools for creating web APIs with Python, Flask, HTML, and Django. We then use Flask to deploy our package model to a web API. Then Django and Bootstrap were used as template languages to make our HTML web page. Bootstrap was used to create the navigation bar of our web page. And in addition, Django was used to make our HTML dynamic by allowing us to put our own Python code and pass variables to our templates. We use this ability to display the uploaded images with their diagnosed categorical name and the web page. We used Visual Studio Code Editor to have a better interaction with the different files. Later, we pushed the Flask web application folder into GitHub by the help of Git large file storage, as our package model was over 200 megabytes. Here we can find the links to the models and deployment GitHub repositories. Uh, to run the Flask web app, uh, I'll change the directory to uh, where it's actually loaded, located. And then I'll run uh, the uh, Python file. As you can see, the um, URL address is located here. So I'll copy paste it into my browser. And as you can see, uh, the web site is as follows. Um, at the top, you can see the navigation bar uh, with the icon Leaf Doctor. And this was made using um, Bootstrap uh, template. And when we start uploading an image, uh, the image will be displayed at the left side. And the um, diagnosis string will be located at the right side. And this is possible with the, the Django template. So uh, we'll choose a file. Let's go and select peach bacterial. Open it, upload and diagnose. And as you can see, the image is displayed on the website and here you can see the diagnosis. Predicted plant name, peach. Predicted disease, bacterial spot. Another example could be a leaf, a corn leaf, which is healthy. Open, upload and diagnose. And as you can see, again, it's displayed on the site and then it says what kind of plant it is and what kind of disease it will have. And uh, here we don't have any kind of disease and it's healthy. Another example could be tomato and a bacterial spot would be its disease. You open it, upload and diagnose. And uh, you can see that the predicted plant name is tomato and predicted disease is bacterial spot. Thank you.